everyone deserve the same defense as the board. Deserve the same defense as the board. The pre-born deserve the same defense as the board. Amen. Amen. Give a clap. Uganda to open for us with a word of prayer. And as we stand there, many among you have had prophetic dreams, have had instances where you have seen visions of where this country is headed. And as we do that, as Kathy comes to pray for us, let us take time to reflect deep within our hearts and also be able to pray for those who are not here and for those who have not made it, but know what is happening in this nation as far as the right of right of our children is concerned. I invite Pastor Kathy. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we stand on this historic ground, O Lord Jehovah God, which is Uhuru Park. Uhuru stands for freedom. And today, Father, we come to proclaim that he that the Son sets free is free indeed. King of glory as a nation, we have just proclaimed the words of our national anthem, declaring we are ready to defend this country. Yes. Father, we stand right now for the pre-born, O oh Lord Jehovah God. In the name of Jesus, we proclaim that they have the right to live. Yes. Father God, we have come also to mourn for the many that did not see this day. For the many, my father, that were conceived through sexual promiscuity, my father. Through heinous acts, O oh Lord Jehovah God, of rape and incest, my God. And that did not get to see today, my father. God, we repent that as a nation we have shed the blood of the unborn. Father God, your word says in Proverbs chapter 6, from 16 to 19, that there are six things that are an abomination to you. Seven, O oh God, that the six things that you hate. Seven that are an abomination to you. And one of them, my king, is the hands that shed innocent blood. Father, as a nation, we come in repentance. As the members of the clergy, we come and we lead this procession because the priests are called, oh God, to call the people into a solemn assembly when a cry reaches before God because of the sin on them. Father, Kenya has been sifted and it has been found wanting and we're here to agree with you my God we are here to repent my father for the shedding of innocent blood father God as a, a nation when we have tried to rise up my God others have come up my father my king father we have seen abortion clinics being banned last year but very swiftly being opened again for no reason at all my God, we repent for our leaders. My God, we repent for the Ministry of Health. My Father, we repent for those who are in authority and are aware that these abortions are taking place, my King. We repent, my God. Father, we repent for those who are skipping day and night, turning abortion into a business, selling baby parts, and convincing, oh God, mothers in crisis, that abortion is the right way. Taking advantage of their, whatever has happened to them, and the situation they found themselves in, oh God, and convincing them to murder their unborn. Lord God, God, we repent. Let me cry before you, Father, knowing that your word says that if my people who are called by my name, God, we gather as your people who are called by your name. For you have promised us that if we we'll gather together and pray, turn from our wicked ways and repent and seek your face. God, you have promised to hear us from heaven and you have promised to heal our land. Father, this nation is groaning. This nation is struggling. We have seen this nation in crisis and we know that part of the accusation that Satan is using is the shedding of innocent blood. And today, Father, we come and we say we do not agree with it. And we come and we repent for it. And we come and we weep. I want to ask everybody here just begin to weep before the Lord begin to repent before the Lord even if you've never had an abortion intercession is about standing in the gap with intercession my God we stand in the gap my God we repent because we are Kenya the people are Kenya and as the people of Kenya join together with the people from other nations we come and we weep 
my God, we have seen what has happened to America. We refuse to take that direction yeah. where we have to cry for our land because of crazy sicknesses, because of judgment when a nation accepts abortion as a legal thing, my God, when it remains as sin before you. God, we refuse to wait until it gets there. So we choose to come to the streets. Let me thank you for the approval of our government Amen. that has supports us today by licensing this much, my father. It means that the government has given permission and the government supports this move. Even as, oh God, we declare our constitution is clear that life begins at conception. My God, even as we've repented and we continue to repent, we stand also in authority. For you have given us authority to trap on our snakes and scorpions. You have told us, Father, that we shall drink poison and it shall not harm us. Father, you have given us authority to take charge of our demonic powers and principalities. Father, we know that those who, those who stand for abortion, those who are proclaiming, calling themselves pro-choice, Father, it's not a human spirit. It is the spirit of the devil, the same Lucifer who has been defeated, who you made a public spectacle of on the cross. And right now, we trample on him again. And we say, you cannot have our nation. You will not have our citizens. You will not have our children in the name of Jesus Christ. For we have no authority except that which is given to us by the name of Jesus. Amen. Right now we bind oh, these yes. principalities that are hovering over our nation Amen. to get the blood of the, of the children. In the name of Jesus we Amen. bind you and we send you to the feet of Jesus Amen. for judgment. Right now as a people of God we oppose you, we resist you, we pull you down right now. In the name of Jesus Christ we take authority of our strongholds in the name of Jesus Christ. And we bind you and command you to the feet of Jesus. Father, right now we thank you. As we speak a release, that the eyes of people will be opened to know the truth. We thank you, Father, for seeing number people, like the people that have made the film and planned. My Father, we wait for it eagerly. Eagerly. As we bless the people behind it, my God. As we thank you, O oh God, for people like Abby Johnson, who have taken the courage to stand and be one woman, my God. We each of us stand in unity and with courage, oh God, knowing that one person can change things, my Father. If God be for them, who can be against them? Father, we thank you that you are for us. You are the author of life. So as we march the streets, my God, send your angels right now, your warring angels, my Father, to scatter every demonic force, to shut down every clinic, my God, that holds up to abortion. Father, we do not need an abortion clinic because what the Lord tries to say, oh God, is allowed, is already allowed in the, in the big hospitals. So Father, we refuse this lie that an abortion clinic will save the life of a woman. That is a lie from the pit of hell. It sells the souls of women and they also die because there is no such thing, even when it is procured by a right doctor. There is no such thing as a safe abortion because detaching a child from the mother before it is time is an unnatural thing regardless of the reason. Father God, and it is still murder. Father, we thank you because you're setting our sisters free. You're setting our daughters free. You're setting our mothers free. You're setting our men free. Father God, we shall not shed the blood of our family members. We shall not shed the blood of anybody in our family. We refuse to agree with Satan because when there is bloodshed, we are accused. We refuse to be accused when Jesus has set us free. Father God, we put on the full armor of God. Even as we begin this match, we know, oh God, that this is not a physical battle. So we put on the helmet of salvation. Let's be together. We put on the helmet of salvation. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. We tie our ways to the belt of truth. We shout our feet to the preparation to preach the gospel of peace. We raise up the shield of faith and of love, by which we will extinguish every fiery dart of the enemy. We raise up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And we take our positions, praying for all the saints with all kinds of prayers. And we stand, and after we've done everything, we will stand in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's appreciate the Lord. Amen. Let's appreciate the
fight Bishop Rotich. I think they are with thank God for this man of God. I'm here to warn you, O Kenya, do not follow the steps of the Western world. Yes. In my country, you can murder a baby until nine months old. Yes. When it's coming out, you can chop its head off because it's considered not a human being. What kind of a nation murders its own citizens? What kind of a nation murders the future of its nation? Such a nation is evil, wicked. This darkness has to be stopped. How do you stop the darkness? As a pastor, I only know one way. As a Christian, I only know one way. It's by bringing the light the light to the darkness. Jesus is the light. Amen. He is the only one that is able. Amen. On that cross, he died for the murderers and he died for the victims. Amen. We have to bring him to both of those sides of the argument. Kenyans, you are at the crossroads. America is pushing. The globalists are pushing. The evil are pushing at every corner, but I say to you, this is your country. It's not there. This is your inheritance. In the Bible it says that when you possess the land that I, the Lord, am giving you, do not forget about me. Kenyans, do not forget the one that has created you and has given you this land for your inheritance. Do not allow anyone. Yes. I don't care how rich they may be because without Jesus they are truly poor. Yes. It doesn't matter what and who is standing behind them because if they force you, if they push you in the evil, towards the evil, they are followers of the devil. This is your land. Those are your children. Those are your children. And one day, O Kenya, you will be accountable for every child that you have allowed to murder. America has fallen. Canada has fallen. In Canada, you can be 12, 13 years old, and you can go to the murdering place. And they will murder that baby without parents even knowing about it, being notified. In Western Europe, Europe is burning, but it's not burning for Jesus. It's burning for the devil. You don't want to follow those steps. I say to you, look at the Western world. Take what's good. But please, I beg you, reject what's evil. Take what's good, but reject what's evil. And murdering children is evil. There is no greater sin. There is no greater sin than mother murdering its own child. I can't imagine that lady will never be the same. That lady will always be hunted down by regrets suicide thoughts I counsel women that went through abortion I know what I'm talking about I live in hell on earth where murder is not only available it's encouraged at every corner through media political system medical system and a clergyman yes you've heard me right and pastors that should stand for the truth but they stand for a lie this is your land take it take it in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth and push the darkness away before it's too late before it's too late. I bless you so much. I thank you 
for this opportunity to be here with you, to march with you, because if you don't do it now, I'm telling you, you will not have tomorrow. If you will allow it now, you will be suffering like me, in my own home, in my own town, in my own nation, when I am called a bigot and a hater. Why? Because I stand for the little ones. Everything is upside down in a Western civilization. The Bible says that there will come a time when a man will call evil good and good evil. We are already living in such a time. Do not, please do not follow our mistakes. Stand up. Fight. Unite. Create your own political party. Amen. Never ever again be ashamed of the name of Jesus Christ. He is the only one Amen. that can push the darkness away. He is the only one that has enough power to push the darkness away. Do not be ashamed of him because he was not ashamed of you on that cross. Yes. He died publicly. He Amen. died naked. He died for you yes. and he died for those children. Amen. Fight for them. Oh, yes. You are treated by removing the baby. It is a lie. The other thing is that the, uh, the definition of abortion has been abused. In medicine we are told the definition of abortion is the termination of pregnancy before uh, viability. That may be 22 weeks, it may be 28 weeks, it depends on where you come from. But they do not tell us what it is when you kill a child who is alive in a normal pregnancy after 22 weeks. So what is that called? Murder. It is called murder. Now if you take a sperm and you leave it alone, until it reaches its normal age, it will die as sperm. <laughs> if you take an egg and you leave it alone, it will die an egg. Yes. But if you take a sperm and put it together with an egg, what you have is a new human being who never existed yes. before. Yes. And if you leave a pregnancy alone, the mother will never give birth to a rat or a cow. She will give birth to a human being. The definition of abortion that has been taken by the KCPF and that we would encourage all the Christians to take that was developed by the Kenya Catholic Doctors Association is as follows. Abortion is a termination of a normal pregnancy by deliberately killing the, un the pre-born person. Anytime you have a normal pregnancy and you bring it to an end, by intentionally killing the pre-born person, what you have committed is an abortion and it is murder. It has, we don't care what WHO says, WHO is not God. We do not care what the UN says, the UN is not God. And they will not tell us how to define our terms. We are tired of deception and we have said no. Let us also say that the woman is hurt by abortion. There is new evidence now that is demonstrating clearly a relationship between breast cancer and the increase in breast cancer with abortion. And this information is being kept hidden. I want to tell you again, as a medical doctor, there is now evidence, clear scientific evidence, that demonstrates that abortion increases the risk of breast cancer. How can you dare call abortion safe? When it kills the baby 100% of the time, injures a woman psychologically 100% of the time, and causes physical harm to majority of women, and increases the risk of uh, cancer in the woman. How can that be safe? And that people who call themselves doctors can actually open their mouths and say that to us. It is very, very, very shameful. On behalf of the medical fraternity, I would like to apologize to the Christian community that we involved ourselves in deception, we now know better, and we shall stand for the unborn child. We shall stand, we shall also stand for the woman. Finally, as I finish, remember that pregnancy is a matter of two adults. Do you remember the woman who was caught in adultery? 
and was brought to Christ, there was already an injustice because only one party was brought to Christ. Yes. Abortion is about pregnancy, and pregnancy is about a man and a woman. Where is the man in this discussion? How can you say that the pregnancy belongs to the woman when you're the one who donated the seat? Yeah. Shame on you. Shame on you. <laughs> it is time men stood up and be counted. You must stand up for your responsibility. If you do not want a child, the answer is very simple. Do not have sex. There is no other medicine. As Christians, we are offering and we are saying, we have always taught chastity. Marriage is not about having sex. Marriage is about having a family. If you want to have a family, then get married. Have a lot of sex, have children, and we shall celebrate you. If you are not ready to have a family, kindly wait until you are ready for that responsibility. Yes. If we could only, if the world could only understand that message, yeah. the message of chastity, not only would we deal with abortion, we would also deal with HIV, we would deal with STIs, yeah. we would deal with cancer of the cervix, we would deal with so many other problems that we have brought onto ourselves. So, ladies and gentlemen, the last word is, this is Christian persecution. There is an unusual intolerance to views of the Christian. That the Christian is being told to keep quiet and not state what he believes or she believes. That they, in, in uh, Kiamaiko there are people who have been killed because of their faith. That we, our billboards are being torn down because of our faith. We are refusing this persecution and we are going it to call it by its name. Yeah. Stop Christian persecution. We are also Kenyans. We have, an, uh, we have an opinion and we have a right to voice it. And nobody should gag us or tell us what to do. Thank you. So, guys, because uh, mostly it is a patriarchal society, men decided to take charge and we decided to objective by women. Something that I decided to do again is because. As our Lord Jesus Christ told us, the greatest commandment is love. If I love you, the Lord should not take me by you. Yeah. Amen. 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 And, and this is a clarion call to our parents and to our fellow youth. Let us go forth and spread the gospel of life. Amen. There are four gospels in the Bible, but I believe there are five. The four gospels and the gospel of life. That is life. Thank you. Is a young man the challenge to us as parents where have we gone he is seeking for mentors not mentors in business not mentors in creating stuff but mentors in preserving life youth jesus youth jesus very well now we want to invite a young man also to represent the very youth who are at the end of all these things that are being targeted towards them and being lied to, being made to believe in things that are not true. I want to invite um, Jonathan Turner to also say something about this. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Praise God. Praise God, Praise God again. Amen. Yeah, man. People keep putting out, but one thing I know is that when you remove that child, you have killed that child. It's as simple as that. There's no debate about that. And what has happened is there's a lot of debates on social media, um, various social platforms about what abortion is, when it's legal, when it's right, when it's not legal, when it's not right. But what has happened is that in every, in most of these debates, God has been left out. God's stance on the situation has not been put into account. And when you go to the Bible, God is very simple and clear. Do not kill. Yeah. Do not murder. Yeah, It is against the law of God. And what has happened is that people have become philanderous. People have gone sleeping around at the wrong times, in the wrong places. 
and they try to fix a wrong with another wrong by killing their children instead of being accountable for them. And as Kenyans, I don't believe we can accept that. I don't believe we can agree with that. We can't fix our mistakes with mistakes. Yeah. We have to live as a godly nation. We have to abstain, we have to protect ourselves, we have to keep ourselves clean for the sake of God, for the sake of our nation, right. to be a good example to others, mm. so that when we go out, when we go uh, um, out in matches like this, we're able to speak personally. We're able to speak knowing that we can speak and that we are free of all this judgment and all these all these things, you know? And we have a God, the beauty of it is that we have a God who forgives. It's not too late for you to change your mind and say that, no, what I did was wrong yeah. and I can stand for the right thing now. Yes. We have to rise up as Kenyans. In spite of the mistakes we've made in the past, we have to stand up for what's right. Because we know what's right as Kenyans and we need to fight for what's right. Yes. Even if we are few, even if we are five of us, we can fight for what's right. All right. God didn't need to use many people. God didn't need to use many people. God needed one man. One man was enough for God. Yes. And us as the youth, us as the people of Kenya, us, this small group of us, because out of the many Kenyans, we are the group that has come out today. And we are going out to fight for what God wants us to fight for. Oh, yeah. So right now, we, take, we choose to take our stance. We choose to refuse to agree with what is been sent by the Western world, being told mm. that abortion is okay. Mm. They've been cases of rape, they've used excuses of rape. Mm. But even in that rape situation, God was there. God knew why, why that situation happened. God put that child in that situation for a reason. He's going to use that child. It's not an excuse. We have to keep standing strong. We have to keep fighting. We have to keep abstaining and um, telling others to abstain, especially us as men. Because in that situation where a woman gets pregnant, when where a lot of times the man tells the woman, it's okay, you go. Because he's afraid of his mistakes. But we have to abstain as men. We have to stay pure. We have to stay holy before the eyes of God and go out and fight this abortion thing. We can't afford to look like hypocrites, but also we can't afford to stay quiet. We have to go fight. That's all I have to say. Let's go stand for the children who are unborn. Let's go fight for their lives. Let's not leave them behind. Thank you. And um, just a reminder to all the young people, um, Job chapter 31, verse one, the young man says that, I have made a covenant with my eyes, not to look down up why then should they look down upon any woman as men we have to remember that we must keep ourselves holy we cannot look upon down upon any woman for any reason yeah we have to keep ourselves holy and we have to make the women know that they are safe around us uh -huh. amen i want you to take a look around at all the posters we are showing all these people and um, as the youth, especially, we've been fed a lot of nonsense, being told that that is a mass of tissues, which it is not. That's not a cell. Okay. That is not a cell. That is a human being. You can't look at these posters and tell me that that is not a human being. I'm 14 years old, and um, as a Christian teen today, I can say that we have been attacked for standing for life we have been attacked for standing for purity and we have been attacked for standing for holiness and um if you are a youth here and you have spoken up about these things on social media you know the kind of attack that we receive and we have been they're trying to put us in a box and we have been told basically to keep our christianity to ourselves because they think it's offensive to speak up about these things but as the youth right now we refuse to be silenced we refuse to be told what Amen. we can't, can't say of social media. Yes. we refuse right now that they're going to tell us that this is okay that killing of babies is okay um they bring up people bring up the topic of rape and as much as that is such a horrible situation why should a baby have to die for a crime that they do not commit yes. we can't take innocent lives and say that it's okay to not let this person have a chance think of the millions of children who have been killed all those destinies that have been killed um a child could have become a president they could have become a pastor they could have become yes. a worship leader but we didn't even give them a chance to pursue that destiny oh, yeah. because of what we say to be okay like what we live in a wicked world today and as i look at the children and the things that are being implanted in their minds by things like the internet and by social media i refuse as a christian to be quiet and let the generations die 
I refuse that we will grow up in a generation where we won't be allowed to speak up for what we believe in because it's not politically correct. Um, as young people, we need to say something about this. It's disappointing you meet a child who you know grew up in the church and they're telling you that abortion is okay, depending on circumstances. It's, it's heartbreaking to have to argue with your friends about a certain topic when you know you grew up with this friend of yours in church. Um, we need to speak up. We need to tell people that this is not okay. We need to show them because a lot of people are misled because of believing what the world has implanted into our minds. And as we march today, I'm so happy to see so many youth standing up. And as I, as I encourage you youth, I know you've been attacked. I know you have been told that what you're saying is merciless, that this is oppressive, that you're not thinking of the woman. But keep speaking up. Don't stop. Let's keep going. Let's support each other. Let's encourage each other. We refuse that we are going to be oppressed. We refuse to be silenced right now. And even as Jesus is the giver of life, Jesus gave us life. Jesus died on that cross for all these children. And we can't kill people in the name of Jesus Christ. We can't say that we are Christians and go around saying, well, you know, if she was raped, it wasn't her fault. It wasn't the child's fault either. Oh, good. Yes, Let's it. speak the name of Jesus to the wickedness that is trying to be introduced into this country. And right now we refuse that the wickedness of the Western world will come and take place in Africa. We pride ourselves in being a country that serves Jesus. We pride ourselves in being a Christian country. And we refuse that the pressure of other countries and other nations that have agreed to accept evil will change what we believe in. So even right now as we march, let's speak up for these children who are yes. given a chance so that others will be given a chance in the future. Oh, yes. My yes. future is already secured. Yes. yes. Isn't it? Yes. You heard the powerful words from yeah. the young girl. Yes. But because of that, a younger girl has been motivated. She just said, please, can I say just one thing? One thing. And I said, it is your future. It's not mine now. We are in their hands. What's your name? My name is Tamara Toria. And I'm turning 10 this year. And I just want to say that if, if Mary had not given, if Mary had not given a chance, would we even have salvation? Sure, we right. wouldn't have salvation. That is if Mary, if Mary gave Jesus a chance, would we? If Mary didn't give, Mary, if Mary didn't give Jesus a chance, would we have salvation? No. So give your children a chance. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, children of Christ, we are now about to embark on what has brought us here. Before we take off, I want to thank the following. I want to thank everybody who has turned out for this match. Clap for yourself. And then I want to say thank you to the following media. If you have a phone in your pocket, and if you have a selfie that you have been taking, I want to say thank you and God bless you. Amen. Sambaza. We also want to acknowledge those who have partnered with us who have come. There is CCTN, there is NTV, there is a thousand watts. And there are so many other people who have said we will not stand and watch and we shall broadcast this as far as all the five corners of the world. So thank you. And now let us begin to Sambaza through hashtag adoption, not abortion. Very good. So soldiers of christ and everybody else who is here we now begin our march we shall be taking on the route down this path on to Hereserasi, on to kenyatta on to moi coming down again kenyatta avenue and we shall come back to congregate here for the final words may god bless you may he abundantly anoint everybody who has come here to do this because it's not for our own glory but God's glory. Amen.
just to mention that this is not just a match, but like we said, it's a spiritual yeah. journey. So part of what we are going to do is we are going to stop in specific places and take prophetic action in those places. Like there are places where we know that there is an abortion clinic, where we are able to access them, we will state that this is a pit. And we will call them a black spot. Like there are black spots where people die and everything. We will call it a black spot, but we will also apply the blood of Jesus Christ and we will shut, the, shut it down in the spiritual realm and it will have to shut down. The Bible says whatsoever you bind on earth, is in heaven. heaven. Whatsoever you lose on earth is, is loosed in heaven. heaven. So we are going to bind. Jeremiah was also told that as much as he's young, God has put the power in his mouth to bring down kingdoms and to raise up others. So we will shut down these kingdoms of wickedness and raise up godly kingdoms. Amen? In Jesus' name. Are you ready? Yeah.